Hello guys, got a little video project here for you today and what we're going to be doing is making a removable bottle for the Edgan Leshy 2. Now before we start I just want to say a couple things. Number one, sorry for the no videos recently, my computer power supply failed on me so I've been unable to make or edit any videos. Which is a real shame as we've just hit 3000 subscribers on the old YouTube channel so I was hoping to make a sort of special video for that. I have got something planned and in the works but it won't be for a little while now. But onto the topic of today's video and what we're going to be doing is making a removable bottle for the Leshy. Now I'm just going to be showing you a little prototype I made, this one. However the final version will be a little different to this one. But for this series I just wanted to show a little bit more machining and a little bit more lathe work. So the idea is as follows. We've got this piece here which pushes in the back just like the Edgun standard part. So this is the standard part and this thread here is what a traditional bottle would screw to. But what we're going to do is make a little setup like this. So this screws on the front here. And then we've got our M12 by 1 to attach a bottle valve to. So this is just a best fittings bottle and bottle valve. However it is the same as an FX one. So what we're going to be able to do is screw a bottle on there and use the rifle normally and then when we want to degas the rifle or maybe change bottles we can just unscrew it and replace it. Or if we need to work on the rifle we can just unscrew it, leave it disconnected and then just bleed the air in the system. This one that I'm making for the video is just a prototype and as such it doesn't have the one way valve to stop air bleeding out this way from the rifle. The final one I've made actually stops air from leaking out the top cylinder through the bottle adapter. But I'll show you a little more on that when we get to the final part of the video series. And then here's a quick look at the drawing I made for the part. The prototype's pretty much identical to the Edgun original part. The only real difference is, is that the thread is a little bit shorter and we have a rebate counterboard in this end so that the one-way valve and air passage sits back from the face a little. Right then, with that out of the way, we'll move over to the lathe. I've just cut some raw stock off using the bandsaw and we're just turning down a little spigot on one end. This little spigot is what we're going to use to hold the part while we do all the external turning. We're also going to hold the part by this when we transfer it to the mill, but you'll see that in a minute. And first of all, we're just cutting the biggest diameter, which is around 22 millimeters. That's the largest diameter on this part, so that's what we're going to first. Then we're turning the forward section down to just under 18 millimeters. This will house the thread and all the other features. And next we're cutting the O-ring groove. Nothing too special about this, we just touch off on the face and then move down to the required length. This part's exactly the same as the Edgun original, so I'm just remaking it exactly. Next up we're just cutting the little relief for the air passage, and that's using a 45 degree chamfer bit. So we're cutting the relief and then I'm just holding the Edgun original up just to make sure we're in the right place. This groove's only to allow air around the part so you can fit the part in any orientation in the rifle. And then to finish off we just put a 45 degree chamfer on the end. Once that's done we can move on to the threads. Now these are M18 by 1.5 and I'm using a full form cutter. These full form cutters cut both the root and the crest of the thread and just make cutting them a bit nicer. So we've got the lathe in the extra slow speed and then retracting the tool. There's no thread gutter for this thread so we've got to be pretty quick on the hand wheels. Since we're using a full form cutter it's pretty simple to work out the thread depth. We just take the pitch and multiply it by 0.6134. That gives us a radial thread depth. Then if we want to work that out on the diameter you just simply need to times it by 2. In our case it works out to be about 1.8 millimeters in the diameter. So we're just feeding in incrementally, a little under a quarter of a millimetre at a time. And then when we finally hit that 1.8 in feed, we're just taking a lot of spring passes just to clean everything up. And then if everything's cut correctly, we should just be able to screw on the original Edgun bottle end. We're using the same threads as was on the original, so the original part will fit. Final operation for this setup is just to counterbore the end so that the one-way valve and the air passage are set back from the face a little. The reason for that will become clear when we make the secondary part and then we can move the part over to the mill. Now I'm drilling the upright holes first but it doesn't really matter which way round we do it. What does matter though is that we don't get the two ends mixed up. First thing we've got to do is find the centre of the part. Now we're using an edge finder here 
And all we need to do is run the edge finder up to the edge of the part, get it touching and then feed in until we see the edge finder run nice and true and then just a bit more till it wobbles off centre. As soon as it comes off centre we know we're on the very edge of the part. So we just do that in all four locations and then we get the centre of the part. Now this first hole that we're doing connects the fill port, so it's quite a deep hole. So I'm just pecking away at it and with lots of oil. And then once we're at the depth we want, we can just countersink it and run the tap through it. And then it's the same operation for the airway passage. This one isn't as deep, so we can just stick with the carbide stub drill. And that's just a 3mm drill bit. I like to use the stub drills as you don't need to use a spot drill for them. They won't wander off on their own, whereas a traditional drill will. Next operation is to flip it on its side and finish drilling the airway. Now for this one we need to edge find again. We only need to find the X position as the Y stays the same. We're using the same two sides of the collet block, so the Y position is still on centre. Once we've found the X position, we can just move along to the required length and just finish off the airway. Next operation is to drill the spring hole, and for that we need to index the part in the collet block. Now this is a six-sided collet block, so a half rotation is 30 degrees. So we're at a 30 degree offset. And because we've changed the reference faces on the collet block, we have to refine our position in the Y axis. The X position can be left as it is though, as I've got a vice stop. And then once we've found our centre, we can just drill the spring hole. This just houses the little spring ball detent, so as you rotate the fill pull cover, it snaps nicely into position. And then the final mill and operation is just to drill the fill pole. We're starting off with a 6mm end mill, and this is a centre cutting one, so we're just plunging through the part. We're using an end mill in this application because I don't want the hole to be pulled off centre by the hole that we've already drilled through it. They will break into each other, so a drill bit might wander, but an end mill won't. And then finalise it with an 8mm end mill. We're using the power down feed in the mill just to create a nice surface finish. And then it's back to the lathe to finish the part off. Now first off we're just parting it off from the spigot. We don't need the spigot anymore as we're going to be turning from the other side. Now once the part was off I just reset it up in the three jaw chuck. We set it up with a dial indicator and just got it within 10 microns. That's well good enough for this application. And that just ensures that the tape is nice and central. So the fill port hole should line up nicely and we'll have no problems. Obviously we parted it a little oversized, so I'm just cleaning up the face there, and then turn it down the little stump for the C-clip to go on. And then once that's done, we can cut the C-ring groove. Now we can't measure this because the caliper blades are too thick, but the C-clips are nominal size. So we know the OD, so we can just feed in until we get the ID. And then the final operation of the whole thing is to cut the one degree taper present on the end. We set the cross slide to a one degree taper, and we're just feeding backwards and forwards until we get the diameter that we want. I'm just checking the fill port cover periodically to make sure that we're on the right track. And then at the end there we got it fitting nicely. And then finally there's a little shot of the cross slide set to one degree. And the little homemade power feed for the cross slide. Just a T-handled Allen key with some slots grooved in it. But it works quite nicely. Right then, here's the final article. Came out quite nicely. Everything fits and everything lines up. So we can put the spring in, the little ball on top, cap rotates like it should, I won't put the C-clip on for now, and it goes in the back, the hole lines up quite nice, the fill port goes in there alright, so we can move on to the next part which will screw on the end here and have the threads for the bottle adapter on it. So having this adapter on here will make our bottle start around here. A little further out than I'd like it to be, I'd like it to be right there. But there's just not enough room in the bore here to make everything work together. In the next video we'll get the bottle adapter part made, so the bit that the bottle screws onto. And that'll just screw on these threads here and seal against this face here. But that'll be coming in the next video, so for now guys. Thanks for watching, I'll see you in the next one.